Hey there, welcome. This is uh, David, or as most people know me as Dafpa from the Discords. How you doing? Hey, you probably have a new Atari uh, VCS, and you're probably uh, launching it up, and it's probably stuck in a loop. Or you've had uh, your VCS working, and then the uh, very late uh, December OS update uh, has you uh, loop, uh, updating, but looping over and over again. Uh, I'm here to help. And the easiest thing to do is to reflash your drive. Now, for the people who have the, the, the issue with, you know, you had a working VCS and the update keeps happening over and over again from this last uh, OS, which happened, I believe, the 21st of December. Um, first thing I would try is stopping the VCS. Unplug it, all right? It's in the middle of an, up, uh, an, up, an update. Just unplug it, okay? Let it sit for 30 seconds, something like that, and then plug it back in. It'll then update and it should just go through no problem. It's chewing on something. We don't know why it's doing that. It's a small number of people where this is happening, but the update can sometimes catch itself into a loop. So break the loop, have the VCS update it again, it'll update again, and then it should be fine. If it doesn't, continue the following along in this. Uh, for everyone else who got a VCS, uh, either from the Black Friday sale or just recently for uh, the Christmas sale, uh, the VCS has, you know, that VCS has probably been in the warehouse for uh, about uh, maybe like, you know, up to a year. There's a big leap from what the OS is on there to the current one that is not happy with making that big of a leap. Okay. So the best thing to do is go on to the uh, Discord here. Okay. Uh, Discord.gg Atari VCS. Uh, if you're not already a member, if you are not a member, just click on that, join it, it's for free. Uh, you don't have to do anything special outside of just click on it and join. And there is a troubleshooting section. In that troubleshooting section, there is a pinned message that has a file to download, all right, that will be flashing your, uh, that will be, will be used to make a flash drive to flash the VCS. So go ahead and download it. It's about one, it's 1 1.3 gigabytes in size. So it's going to take a few minutes depending on your internet uh, connection speed. Uh, it can take you know, a couple of minutes up to a half an hour or whatever your internet's going to dictate on that one. So go ahead and start downloading that and then what we're going to do is take that file and flash it. And I'm going to demonstrate that right now. Alright, so you've downloaded the file. Congratulations! So what you're going to do is now open up a uh, a flashing program. Uh, I use uh, Balina, Balina Etcher. I don't know what the, how to properly pronounce this. I just call it Etcher. All right, uh, Balin, Balina Etcher. Uh, some people like uh, like to use a program called Rufus. Uh, either one will work. I like Etcher just because it is very simple interface, and you know Rufus gives you a lot of options. So if you're like a power user or you, you know, do kind of special uh, things with your flash drive, it has more options than all that. Just to create a simple flash drive, Etcher is just simple. You pick the file that you want to flash, you pick its destination, and then it does all the rest, okay? So I've got a USB stick. Uh, this is nothing special, it's just a 16 gigabyte. You can have an eight gigabyte, you can have something even smaller. Uh, I think it takes up, I don't know what the, what, the, what the full size is, but if you have an eight gigabyte, that's fine. Uh, if you have a four, if you have a USB three or faster, that's just going to help speed up the process. All right. So this is what you do. You take your, you take your uh, USB drive that you're going to use. Now remember, flashing this drive is going to erase everything that's on here. So please, if there's something valuable on this uh, drive, take it off. All right, because it's going to be wiped clean. Flashing a drive means that it turns this into a dedicated installable drive okay it doesn't just put a file onto it it wipes it out and rewrites this drive into something that's a dedicated drive okay so anything valuable on the drive that you pick please remove it because it's going to get wiped out all right so you just plug it in let me just plug it in down here right. plugged it into my computer and you have downloaded the file that was linked in the troubleshooting section so you just select select image all right and I threw it on the desktop, all right? It's an ISO file, all right? When you first download it, here, let me show you this. So when you first download it, it's a zip file, okay? 
open it up and extract it, okay? And then, you know, put it somewhere. Oop. Yes, it's, it's fine. Just open up the, the file. Download. Open. So there you go. So this, I just threw it onto the desktop, and it was all hunky-dory, okay? So now I select. I go to, I threw it on the desktop, so I'm putting that there. I open that up. And there it is. And then select the target. You're going to pick. Oh, it doesn't seem my drive. We'll put it there. And then you pick uh, the drive that you want to pick. Now, if you have multiple USB things, like an external uh, USB drive or something like that, please choose the right destination uh, for it. All right. Oh, there it goes. So there it is. There's my USB drive that I'm going to send. And I'm going to hit continue. All right. There it goes. Continue. All right. So now it's a, here's the file that I'm flashing. Here's its destination. And then I click flash. All right. We're going to kick flash. And it will then go through the flashing process and the validation process. That can take anywhere up to, depending on the power of your computer, uh, you know, maybe up to, you know, 10 minutes uh, or something like that. Somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes uh, is the normal. And uh, so we're going to hit that and I'm going to just fast forward in time. Okay, we flash forward in time, and so now I have my flashing USB drive, all right, all ready to go. Uh, etch your etched it in there, uh, validated, it's all good to go. So this drive is a dedicated drive that's going to install the current uh, Atari OS onto the VCS. And how do I do that? Well, I plug it in, that's all. Uh, you just plug it into your, uh, into your VCS. I'm going to plug it into the front port here, one of my front ports. All right, there we go. And I'm then going to launch it up. Right now I have it off. If you have yours on, just restart your, uh, your VCS. And let's take a look at that real quick. And start that sucker up. Now I have a keyboard. This is going to be a little bit handier to have the keyboard uh, on the ready uh, when the later process comes along. So it's launching. And you have a selection of what of what to what to do. Oh, my keyboard's not operating. Okay. Uh, oh, because I forgot to plug that in. Okay, so it's going to automatic after a few seconds, it's going to boot in eight seconds as you see down below. And I haven't moved, so it's going to do the Atari Flash. But I have some other options, whether just to go into the BIOS or flash the, or flash the BIOS that's on this file. Uh, I want the first option, so if you just let it sit there after 10 seconds or so, it'll, it'll do uh, what it's on its own. And now the VCS is going to, it's going to start reading the file. It's going to boot. It's already been booted from that uh, USB drive. It's going to just start reading that, and it's soon going to start flashing that drive. And, okay, here we go. And very soon it's going to tell you not to unplug. Any moment now, once it starts doing the process. All right, there we go. So now it is currently writing the current operating system onto the system, all right? So don't plug it in. Uh, so don't, I mean, say, don't unplug the VCS. If you unplug it during this process, it's very possible that it, the system could be bricked up. Uh, running this flash drive again in a potentially bricked up system might fix it, it might not. Uh, so, you know, please, Help for no power outages. Uh, if you're in the midst of the blizzards that are going off in like Buffalo and other parts of the country, uh, maybe now is not the best time to flash your VCS. Uh, if you have cats who like to unplug things, please remove the cats from the area uh, and things like that. So we're going to just let this sucker run. And this should take about like somewhere under 10 minutes, probably like five minutes or so uh, it should be. All right. So let's flash. Let's fast, fast forward in time. Okay, so now the VCS has updated itself, and it says now to remove the USB key and to power cycle the device. 
Um, it's very subtle, you know, as you can see, nothing, nothing, no fireworks happened or anything like that. So you just kind of have to pay attention uh, to the fact that it's now asking you to do that. One time I, uh, first time I ever flashed it, I was waiting for like a ma major change in the screen and I didn't notice that, you know, the text said to turn it off and I was waiting and I probably like waited like an extra hour uh, before I restart it. But uh, I'm now going to do what it says. I'm now going to unplug my stick from the USB, right? And I'm just going to unplug the VCS from the back, All right? Boom, it's unplugged. I'm going to plug it back in. Eh, it's going to wait a few seconds. All right, plug it back in and power it up. Here it goes. And now it should launch into the reflashed Atari VCS. And we're going to go through the setup process. All right, so it doesn't recognize the fact that I have anything plugged in because I have nothing plugged in, right? This is where you sync up at least one of your controllers right now, okay? Now I'm going to just for uh, speed and efficiency, I'm just going to plug it in uh, via the USB, all right? So I'm going to just plug it in USB and it's going to instantly recognize that I've plugged in the joystick, all right? If you're going to do it by just wireless, uh, you just hold down, you hold down the Fuji button, okay, for about four-ish seconds until it starts flashing really fast and then the usb uh will, you know the, no, the usb the bluetooth will pair and then you will get the same image would say now press the fuji again once it's synced up right but you hold down the fuji uh for about four seconds or so um and hold it down and then when you let go it'll flash uh really fast and that's in its pairing mode all right but i just did usb just to, to speed this up Okay, and now it's asking me to press the A button. Right, there it goes. English. And then you put in your network here. Password to your network. go should recognize in a second now my this particular VCS uh, had its BIOS already updated uh, if you're getting a new uh, VCS uh, you, very likely you're gonna go through this update all right and it's going to detect a BIOS update because uh, what should be default is version 23 version 24 is out there so at that point you just saw it will detect the BIOS update and it'll do you know, it will restart, go through a BIOS update, restart again, okay, and then you go through those steps again of picking your language, you know, putting your uh, network in, and then it will, uh, you know, you'll you'll get back to this screen because then you'll have the most current up-to-date uh, operating system as well as the most current uh, BIOS update, all right? And I'll just, I'll just click in for guest right now just for the heck of it. But that's also where you either set up your new account or you log in with an existing account. So I'm just uh, doing that. And there's going to be some things that are going to download. Uh, some things are always uh, going, you know, needs to be updated from the default on there. Uh, Chrome always is constantly being updated on that. So it'll have a, you'll see some uh, downloading happening. And those are the individual apps that are going to update. But that's, a, that's about, that's it really. So once you go through those uh, one, once you go through those steps, and that's pretty much all it is. Uh, you know, the hardest part is actually just downloading the file and flashing it onto the USB drive. Once you do that, it's pretty much hands off. You plug it into the VCS; it will then update itself. You know, it will then rewrite from there and uh, download and, and install onto the VCS, and that's it and then you put you know you set it up and again you're gonna have there was one extra step that I didn't go through 
and that's when it connects and checks for updates. It's going to check and see that there's a BIOS update going from version 23 to version 24. Uh, so then it'll in, you know, restart, install, restart again, and then you'll get back to the uh, setup process of choosing your language, you know, recognizing the controller, picking your language, uh, making your internet connection, and then going into the dashboard. Uh, but from there on, you're good to go now. You have a, a fully functional uh, VCS. So if you have any questions or any issues, uh, again, the Discord is a great source for, uh, for the community in terms of troubleshooting uh, new things, uh, some ideas to, uh, you know, of updates on a variety of things in terms of uh, you know, tweaking the BIOS a little bit. Uh, but if you do tweak your BIOS, uh, that is... We, uh, we have a password uh, and because we're trying to discourage people from delving too much in there because you can brick your system. Now there are a couple places where adjusting your BIOS is, in, uh, is helpful. You know, changing the RAM speed, uh, the, the way the computer uh, recognizes the RAM speed, you know, that's, that's a good use of the BIOS. But any really tweaking of the BIOS and you brick it, uh, that's kind of, that's a, void, that's a void warranty. All right, so we encourage people not to do it, but if you know what you're doing and you go in the BIOS, you can make some, uh, a couple tweaks here and there, but it's at your own risk, all right? So just forewarning you on that. Um, but you can also uh, email me if you have any problems or any issues. That is my email address and you may email me. Uh, and, but you know, Discord, that's a place you can get a hold of me as well as other support staff people and we're happy to help. So if you have any issues uh, or continuing issues, please just let us know and we're happy to help you. Uh, outside of that, um, you all have a great day.